Hello everybody, so I thought I'd continue with the John Dupay um, interrogation um, which has been, which was put on Chris Hansen's channel, Hansen vs Predators, I'm pretty sure you've all checked it out by now, and someone, and thanks, sorry I can't remember your name, who made me aware that um, Chris Hansen has apparently reached out to, um, Oh, sorry, it was Chester Marie, so, yeah, cheers. Um, Chris Hansen's reached out to Lorne, and he just said um, he's reached out to him and he's waiting to sort of figure something out with regard to, I don't know, whether he, you know what he'd be planning, some kind of interview or something. I just can't see that happening. Um, I don't think Lorne's got the balls to confront someone, you know, to confront um, that kind of interrogation if you will because obviously there's going to be some tough questions you know I might be wrong but I just I don't know and the thing is why would he do it you know what benefit would there be to him I can't see Chris Hansen paying him so I don't think that's going to materialise really uh, someone made me aware as well in one of the streams that Clobbering Time did that uh, he kind of um, confessed and sort of um, admitted finally that he was a serial predator and whatnot. So I had a little listen. And although it was quite, you know, strange to sort of hear him say it, there was part of me that thought he was telling that Tiffany. It was really good. Like what, um, what she wanted to hear in a way. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like he goes from one extreme to the other, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's quite an un. un me and Shins Koala were chatting about it, and he's a very unpredictable character. He's a bit all over the place, isn't he? And when he's drunk, at least, he's like, oh, I've been stitched up. But anyway, let's not talk long too much. So, we've got the interrogation of this guy. So, we will... Um, we'll crack on. And... Um, yeah, so, basically... We left it where um, he is being confronted and uh, he's not admitting it, basically. He, he's saying that he didn't know who the girl was. He wasn't sure it was the girl he's been talking to because I think they've sort of touched upon the fact that it's not really... It doesn't. She doesn't look like the decoy. He's dancing around it. He's getting himself caught up in silly situation in the you know in a bit of a hole really it's just not making any sense it's quite amusing to be fair so let's crack on talk to him more about how they can able to you guys can everything turn into a nightmare mm -hmm. but before the nightmare was laying out the chips and the mm. and the iced tea and the candy bar mm. and she was looking at you and she was excited and happy mm. and it didn't seem like you were like you don't look like Bailey. You actually asked for a hug. Oh yeah, I think we touched upon this in the last video, didn't we? Didn't we? I mean, I assumed it was her, but I mean, I, cut, I looked at her, and she did look different, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was hoping, I was assuming it was her, you know. I just got the ball with her, so. But she did look different a little bit. If she wanted to have sex tonight, would you have? No. Why not? For one, um, I had really, really got to even know her, honestly. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think it was there to watch, you know, hang out, whatever. But I, I swear on my little boy, I wasn't going to have sex with her. I really wasn't. Well, then it help us understand this. What, they're just the texting? Yeah, when what you were saying to her. Oh, that's what I want. That's right, why you're confused. Parties. So, she's fumbled a little bit, hasn't she? She didn't have the right information in front of her. I think she's going to refer directly to something he said that she's like incriminating, something really sexual, you would assume. <coughs> oh, you wanted to feel, you want her to feel you inside her. I mean, I know what that means to me. No, I know. I should never say much to be sure And you're talking about wanting to make her con? I know. That was just all. What did you think that, um, like, what is she supposed to 
read from that way? Well, I mean, honestly, when I was talking to her, I mean, I, I was hoping that there was a chance that, you know, that she, it was just, I don't even know why I said that to her. He just doesn't, you know, he's not admitting, it's like I've said many times, these people are not going to voluntarily give up the freedom. Very few people do that and just cough to it. Some people, you know, it's kind of like fight or flight or just lay down your arms, isn't it? And some people just kind of, some people are ashamed of the situation that they're in, so they just haven't got enough will inside them to sort of fight it. It's kind of, I genuinely think in some people, it's kind of morality taking over, really. They're going, you know what, whatever happens to me, then fair enough. It's like a battle of the conscience, isn't it? They have kind of knew all along that they were doing a terrible thing, and I just think they haven't got it in them to sort of fight it. So some people go, yeah, it was me. It's like when you watch that interview of Lar Rolando Resta Cruz. Um, he, he's so kind of like, I think he's just got no energy left to fight it and he just coughs to everything, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Um, he literally is like a broken man where there's nothing left. But this guy, you know, he, he just, he's just not going to admit in this situation, he's just not going to admit that, oh yeah, I was going to have sex with her. He's like dancing around it really, isn't he? It's not doing him any good. He's kind of clinging to his last thread of freedom in a way, isn't he? Seeing what he can, you know, seeing how he can get out of it. Because you were kind of hoping that it was going to happen. No. No? You were just going to say that. No, I wasn't going to plan on having sex with her. No. I mean, it's it's... Obviously, for the interviewers, it's very frustrating, isn't it? Because you've got this guy. Everybody, there's three of them there. All three of them know, beyond any doubt, what he was going to do. Um, You know, that if the circumstances had have allowed him, he would have had sex with that underage kid. Um, You know, there's no... I don't want to patronise anybody that's listening, but clearly there's no... There's no, absolutely no... um reason whatsoever to engage in a, in a chat with a person of that age you just don't do it um and to say the things that he said it's like we've touched upon it before the sort of the fantasy realm and the real world so you can engage in conversations online that you wouldn't necessarily follow through which is what a lot of them use as a defense and if i if anybody's seen the case of the cannibal cop where this police officer in the US um, talks about eating women. Um, and there was all a controversy. He says, well, it's a fantasy online. I've got these bizarre tendencies and I fulfill that side of me by engaging in it online. And he actually got convicted and then it was overturned. It's a very interesting case documentary, the case of the cannibal cop. And his argument was, I would never do this. It's all, you know, it's all fantasy world. But this guy showed up. Um, obviously, you've got a separate offence of engaging in that kind of discussion online, but there are further offences if you can prove that it was an attempted, if, if he was going to go, if you can prove beyond a doubt that he would have gone through with it. You know, they turn up with, that's why they get them to bring the condoms and the you know, and that's why the decoys there, they want them to say incriminating things. It's, it seems, you know, for obvious reasons, you know, these guys are predators. You know, there's no doubt about it. I didn't bring condoms. I bought food. Do you ever have sex with a condom? What's that? Do you ever have sex with a condom? Just my son's mom. So the answer is yes, son. Yeah, my son's mom. But we were together for a while. And there's ways to make girls come without having sex. <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> Obviously, you know, before he said in the chat, you know, he wanted to make a come. You know what? You know what? What? What's that about? You know, respond to that. Tell me what you meant. If if you weren't going to do anything, why were you speaking like that? So you're talking about wanting to make her come because her ex-boyfriend couldn't. So was that at all part of the plan? No, I didn't have nothing of that to me. Do you think that a girl that you text like this thinks you're going to have sex? Is this the way you're talking to her before you show up? I mean, we, we didn't talk about having 
when I was going over to China, nothing about having sex. When did these messages happen? A couple of days ago, when I first knew you. A couple of days after we started talking. But isn't it true that today is the first opportunity that she had to be alone? Um, I don't know. She told me that her parents and mom went away. I mean, I don't know. She only knew from her, her mom wasn't away. But I mean, I don't know if she had prior opportunities, you know, to be alone. Well, I never mean, really asked her. No, no. Do you think she would have invited you over to hang out and watch the football game if her mom was home? No. Right, why? I mean... Sorry, what did you, did what you over? go back and see what she had? What's your one? But I mean, I don't know if she had prior opportunities, you know, to be alone. Well, I never really asked her. No, no. Do you think she would have invited you over to hang out and watch the football game if her mom was home? No. Right. Why? I mean, because of a, a guy, you know? A guy, and what else? And she's there with her mom, and well, I mean, my age, too. Right. I would say that would be the biggest factor. Mm. So they're just wanting to admit that he shouldn't have been there, and that she's just try, trying any tactic she can to sort of get him to say what he was going to do, basically. How old are you? Uh, 40. 40. How old did you tell her you were? Uh, 30. Did you tell her that now? Yeah, I lied about Mary's because I didn't know she lied about hers. So he lied about his age? He said he was 30? Well, usually, I don't know. I mean, maybe I've come from a different generation. And usually when people lie about their age, they usually say they're older than they are, right? Yeah, you just Not usually people don't usually say they're younger than they are, do they? Except for a man who's 40 and wants to have sex with a girl. I mean, I mean, I mean, People always lie and say they're younger than they are. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you definitely talked about her age, so there was no disputing that she was. She was clearly explaining to you that she was not yet fourteen; she was thirteen. Mm -hmm. So you knew you were going to a thirteen-year-old's house where her mom was not home, right? Mm -hmm. And you know you had engaged in conversation with her by text, talking about what you wanted to do to her sexually. That I wasn't even going to do with them. Yeah, but even just the talk. <laughs> you know, he's just he's just clinging to this. I wasn't going to do, you know, I wasn't going to do anything. But he's. I'm quite interested to know whether he's going to crack. Really, I mean, look at the way he sat. You know. He's sort of huddling together, isn't he? Like he's got, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like. Tell me we didn't believe you weren't going to do it. I wasn't. Who convinced us? I swear I was just going over here to have some fool where I lost the game. Do you, do you see something wrong with just that part, though? What if she was just 13 and wanted to just hang out, you know, what if she was just all over you and there's no parents there and you could have spent the whole night there? I mean, isn't that dangerous for you? What did you tell your sister you were doing? Because I doubt if you told her you were meeting a 13-year-old girl. I didn't say I was going to hang out with a girl. And she drove you from the hall up to third hall? The tears are kind of a combination of things. It's for sympathy. But I also think that his crying is self-pity because of the situation he's in. And then what did you tell her about getting a ride home? I thought I was going to call her. They had me picking, picking up. How old's your sister? 28. She's good to you like that? She'll go back home to Norwalk and come back to Fairfield and pick you up. Yes, she hasn't. I mean, we're close. What would you do if you came home after you told your son you were going out for 20 minutes? And you came home and there was a 30-year-old guy sitting next to your son who was 10. 
not too much younger than this girl. Oh, great tactic. The old using the fact that you've got children against you and try and put you, you know, which is obviously something Chris Hansen does quite a lot, isn't it, in the interrogations? You know, you, you, one of his, he even asked Lon, didn't he, have you got any kids? Because it's a great way of trying to induce some kind of humanity, you know, trying to induce the, the you know, the humanity that is within them. No matter how deeply hidden it is, it is there. And obviously, what would, you know, invoke your um, human side, your compassion, than talking about your children? But of course, with some of these people, they don't, um, you know, I, I don't call this an unfair generalization, but I struggle that these predators really love the children as much as they should if they're running around doing this. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I just think that, I can't grasp why someone would want to harm a child in the first place, but if you've got a kid and you've watched the life grow, you've given life to, to a child, regardless of the gender, um, the fact that you'd be willing to hurt a child and sort of violate a kid really in this way it's, it's, it's pretty it, you know don't want to create moral outrage but how can you not with these people you know it, it's it's like it's the thing as well like a lot of them use the defense of i've got a kid so i wouldn't do anything well you know the guy who turned up with duct tape he's like because i've got a six-year-old daughter i'm trying to see Okay, well, why does that mean that you weren't going to do anything? Do you know what I mean? It makes it worse. It's like you see so many parents these days and you see the behavior that they engage in when you're out in public and you just think you shouldn't be allowed to have children. You know, some of the things that people do, it's like um, just simple things. Like the other day I was um, walking in one of the local towns and there was... What was it now? And we were, me and my friend just said something to someone, and they was like, said the c word in front of the kid. Um, just in a passing conversation, I can't remember why how we got talking to them. We might have like bumped into them or something, and they used the c word. They weren't calling me that, surprisingly. But I was like, you engaging in that kind of language in front of your kid? Have you got any idea? You know the the sort of, I mean, obviously there's worse things than than bad language but um you know it it, it it always it i've never fully understood the lack of responsibility that some people have towards raising kids you know people some people see having children as some kind of badge of honor rather than seeing it for what it truly is and the honor that's bestowed upon you you know it just amazes me it really does Huh? Went off on one there a little bit, didn't I? What does that say to you? Anything? So, with regard to what I've just said there, will that, will this ping something in his conscience? It's obviously, it's obviously thinking. He's not really said anything. He's, he's getting really emotional. You know, he's, he's hiding away from them. He doesn't want to look them in the eyes, rubbing his hands together quite nervously, he's sort of cocooning in on himself, which means he's trying to withdraw, you know, and he's just throwing that at him. Let's see. But, he's, he's, you know, the fact that he's not giving any kind of immediate response is kind of struggling, isn't he? What would you believe that guy to be doing? Have you done this before? You've done it. He's not answered it, has he? He can't answer the question. And they've got sick of waiting for it. I'd just kept drilling down on that. When he's asked another direct question, you know, have you ever, did you say, have you ever done this before? I've never met no girl, anyway. No? No? Never. 
have you tried? You see, I don't like that question because it's 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 not put him on the front foot. It's not giving him an advantage, but he's opened up. He's like he feels more comfortable now because he's got something. He believes he's got something to cling on to with regards to it makes him feel better. As soon as he answered that question, he went back in his chair and opened himself up to the interviewers. So in other words, he's more comfortable with, with being seen. He's not trying to hide away. Because what what's happened at that point is he said, no, I've never done this before. So it me means I've got some credibility. So he's, he's gained more confidence then, hasn't he? He's like, okay, I've never done that before. And he probably hasn't. Not because he doesn't want to, but because he's not been given the opportunity. It's like most of them, it's like Lorn. Lorn never went to meet anybody before. It's like... Um, you know, Chris Chris Hansen asks that question all the time. I don't really understand why. Because, never, you know, I think the only person I can remember who actually admitted to speaking to other... or engaging in that kind of activity before, excuse me, was uh, Donald Morrison. And he's a bit of a, you know, simple person, shall we say. I believe this hasn't happened. No. Yeah. So what's, what's going on in your life that you reached out for someone else? I mean, I just hit it off with her and just, I mean, I don't know. Is this a recurring problem for you, reaching out to younger girls? No. No, nope, not at all, I swear. Did you know what was wrong? Yeah, I know it was wrong. Okay. Well, that's a start. So, I couldn't hear what he said then. Let's just go back a minute. She said, do you know it was wrong? And then you would assume he's given some kind of... Um, a, um, you know, some kind of um, admittance because she said, well, at least that's a start. I just couldn't hear it because he kind of mumbles and the sound quality is not great. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. Well, that's a start. I think he said, yeah, I knew it was wrong. So, that's, she's, he's get, that's some kind of a confession, if you want to use that word. You want probation? That's it. Is your case in all completed? No. It's still going through court? Yeah. Is your son with his mom tonight? This is a lack of preparation I've got. I'm not even sure what his other case is. Please help me. Well, how can we help you? Okay. Do you go to counseling? Let me go to Connecticut counseling. Okay. For for drugs? Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. No, no, no. I don't know that, but I'd be afraid of anything else. You talk about anything else? That's it. Do you think you need to talk about anything else, though? Or this was just a one-time thing that's never going to happen again? No, I want to talk to you. I know I'm never talking to you. No, 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 no. Nice to talk to strangers on whisper and what else? That's it. Really? Well, I'm friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can talk to strangers though? On Facebook? Yeah. No. Yeah. Do you accept people that you don't know? No. <coughs> What's your Facebook name? My name's John Jippy. <laughs> I wonder if that account's know. still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably not. Do you not. accept people that you don't know? No. <coughs> What's your Facebook name? My name's John Jippy. I'm not, I don't know if Facebook's all a gossip. 
every once in a while I see my husband and my little boy, that's it. Child pornography? Okay. You ever looked at any child porn? No. Oh, that's quite a, that's quite a full-on direct question, isn't it? There's no beating around the bush with that one. So, if we were looking at your phone, are we gonna find stuff on there? Maybe saved pictures of young girls, or yep. boys, or anything? Nope. There's nothing on there. I never looked at anything. I swear to God. So what's going on in your life that this happened now? Thing is, if you got asked that question and there wasn't any part of you that was like interested in that kind of thing, you'd be outraged at that question, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? Totally outraged. You know, have you ever looked, because it's, you know, it's like a terrible, well, obviously a terrible thing. But he's like, no. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, the position is in. It's a fucking reasonable question, isn't it? I mean, uh, I've been single, lonely. Uh, I hit it off with her. And that was it. I've been single for... So, to just kind of recap. <laughs> you're saying you're lonely, you know, you've got a wall with her, you guys really hit it off. Mm. So you, a 40-year-old man, we're going over to a 13-year-old girl's house with no parents there to just hang out and watch football. Yes, I would. It's just a bit stupid. You know what I mean? The, the, uh, he's just coming across as a bit of a simple character. Like he's expecting her to buy it. Like there's a part of him that thinks that by him denying it, he's going to make some kind of gain. But there's something majorly wrong with that. Do you see that? No, yeah, like yes, it's dangerous. Do. Dangerous for the little girl. Which, is it ever okay for a four-year-old stranger to be allowed into a 13-year-old little girl's house with no one else home? What would you think if you heard about that on the news? Like, oh my God, this 13-year-old girl let in a, a 40-year-old stranger into her house. Good question. Just to hang out. Would you consider that dangerous? I know what you think. Yeah. But then we throw on the fact that you're telling her that you're going to make her come and you want to feel on the inside of her. You throw that on top of that really wrong situation of just going to hang out with her. I think you got to kind of come to terms with that. and kind of admit that you would have had sex with her if she was into it. No, I wasn't. I wouldn't have. I don't think you were going to, like, hold her down and rape her. And I don't think anyone believes that. You see, this this is a tactic they use often. I think they did in the uh, McFetridge interview, is that try and get them to admit the offence by scurring them with a worse offence that they could have committed and, you know, trying to... Do you understand what I mean? It's like, oh, we know you wouldn't have uh, held her down and raped her because we know you're not like that. But if she was open to the possibility, would you? But I think if she was a 13-year-old that was into you, you would have been okay with that. No, I wouldn't. I've been having sex with her. <laughs> he just like, yeah. I thought if one of them just picked up that tripod now and twatted him with it, <laughs> it's like, yes, you would, you know, because you can tell like the frustration, because it makes things so much easier for those people if he just says yes, you know, they don't have to go through with the trial and then the paperwork that they have to create isn't as le isn't as huge by. The the degree is mag you know magnificent. Having to prepare for a, for a trial and just sending a straight charge file over to the courts, the difference is massive. So um, you know they just want him to cough to it, but he's just not having it. He's just not having it, despite. And this is why you can understand the frustration because the evidence is overwhelming. You know, it's an open and shut case, but he can still contest it. You can contest anything. I would have. What would have stopped you if she was all over you? I would have just told her I can't do it. <laughs> oh, he's, he's even starting to piss me off. 
What was your time? I just said, I can't do it, you know, and just told it. What if she was like, well, then why do you say those things to me? If I text, what? I, that's why you're here. That's why she wanted you to come over. I would have just got around it. I wouldn't have did it. I would not have, I was not going to have sex with that girl. You see, like, when he said that then, look at the reaction, the body language changed with that guy. And even her to a degree. Come over. I would have just gone around it. I wouldn't have did it. Frustration. His eyes have gone up. Lent, you know, he's leaned back in his chair. He's pissed off. He's like, oh, Christ, here we go. You know what I mean? I, have, I was not going to have sex with that girl. I wasn't. See, this, to hear the sigh from him then, it's like, it's frustration, isn't it? It's like he knows they're not going to get anywhere with him. They're going to have to do more work. And emotionally, it's annoying. You know, there's going to be a personal attachment to, um, to you know, there may be parents themselves. Um, and, you know, you want to catch the bad guys. And... Um, you know that's in effect what he is, and he's just not admitting to it, and it's 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 very frustrating. Yeah, no way out of there. Yeah, no car you could drive away with. Yeah. Planning on spending the night, right? Yeah, I was gonna get picked back up. You told Chris Hansen you were gonna spend the night. Yeah, I was gonna get picked back up. Tonight? Yeah. Well, downstairs, you. What was they said? Your sister will be quiet. Your sister, if she comes and gets you. Yeah, she was gonna come get me. Back tonight? Mm hmm. <laughs> Well, my brother here to from That's if you didn't stay over, because you said in the house that you were hoping to stay over. That's what you said. Or did you guys communicate that? You and Bailey, did you, did you guys talk about you spending the night? No. No? Okay. That doesn't make a big difference, Bill. Listen, there's no, there's no plausible explanation for a 40-year-old man to wait to be in a house with a 13 year old girl and there's no parents home. There's only one reason for a guy to do it, and that's for sex. So you can say whatever the hell you want to say, but you're lying. You're lying to yourself. You don't lie to us. We know why you were there. You're lying to yourself. Admit it to yourself, and let's get out of it. <laughs> you see, <laughs> brilliant. He's taking the more direct approach now, isn't he? It's a little bit of bad cop, good cop kind of thing. He's staying within the boundaries of um, etiquette, really, and not getting too aggressive, but. You know, he's just pissed off, isn't he? Just like, come on, stop being a dick. Just, you know what I mean? Seeing if that tactical work, just being a slightly more, you know, more aggressive. Because there's no other reason for you to be there. I'm looking at You're going to have, you know, you could sit and watch a football game with your son. Can't you? Can't you? Not tonight, no. Any other night? Only on Sunday. Okay, so on Sunday, you could sit around and watch a football game with your son and bring him a chocolate bar and. All the other stuff that you brought over there, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Couldn't you? You could, absolutely. But no, you chose to come to Fairfield from Norwalk on a rainy Thursday night to sit down with a 13-year-old girl whose parents were home to have to do what? To do what? Be honest. To, to do what? No. To do what? To chill and watch the football game. To do what? No, not to chill and watch the ball game. To eventually have sex with her. I wasn't you were there. hugging her within the first minute you were in the <laughs> house. You're trying to hug her. You're pushing yourself on her right in front of us. She didn't want to hug you. She didn't do anything. So what do you think? Do you think he's going to? Uh, do you think he's going to crack? Because he's been put. He's, he's being put under quite a lot of pressure now, isn't it? He's getting. You know, as we've already um, ascertained, he's getting pissed off. She's starting to get pissed off now. Uh, eight minutes left on this video. Let me just see how long. Um, we've been going right. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to quit there, guys. Um, but what I'll do is I'll continue. Um, I'll continue with the rest of it to see if we get anything, um, and see where we go. It's quite a nice part to sort of end it, really, isn't it? Because on the next video, we're gonna see if they manage to crack him. I would suggest that they don't. But I might be wrong. Uh, but anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and I will speak to you soon.